what hearing loss starts like, what hearing loss sounds like, and how hearing loss can affect our loved ones, some communication strategies we're gonna talk about, and some very important information um, to understand the impact that hearing loss can have on individuals, whether it be yourself, a family member, a friend, or someone you know with hearing loss. So I'm very glad to be here. Again, I'm Dr. Lisa Gamina with Finer Hearing, and I am a mobile audiologist. Um, so with that said, I'll go ahead and start my sharing my screen. I do have a PowerPoint to share with you this evening. Um, so we're going to begin sharing my screen here. And we can definitely take questions either throughout at the end. I'd be happy to answer any questions and are always feel free to reach out to me um, at the end. I will provide my contact information with you as well. Um, so let's talk a little bit about some disclaimers, some disclosures. Again, um, I do use some examples. I might cite um, some materials and I have references for all of the material that's presented here, as well as I'm not being paid or endorsed for this presentation. So I, I do have to start with that as some of the items you might see as an example that I might discuss. I'm not being endorsed um, by any company for that information, okay? So some objectives tonight is to review the natural decline of the function in hearing simply as we are getting a little bit older and wiser and investigating the consequences of hearing loss on the aged population in particular. Um, reviewing literature, what we need to do to gain a fuller understanding of strategies to cope with hearing loss, and most importantly, trying to get a feel for what is hearing loss? What does it sound like? How does it really affect an individual's communication exchange on a day-to-day -day basis? So we're really going to dive into that portion of um, learning about hearing loss in general. So before we can kind of really discuss hearing loss, I really like to always point out and never um, underestimate the power of our brain. Our brain is one of the most powerful organs in the body. It's this squishy little brain. See, my brain's on <laughs> separated from me right now. Powerful organ, weighs about three pounds. It's kind of got a firm texture, jelly kind of texture to the brain. And the brain is the sole responsibility Ability for our hearing, our sight, our taste, our touch, our smell. The brain is the sole center source of a lot of our mechanisms that we use every single day. Okay, so we have to always consider how important the brain is to our auditory or to our hearing system. So when we talk about the brain, and I can have a whole conversation just on the brain. Um, we can talk more about understanding components of language. So in for order for us to have a communication exchange, language allows us to be able to have hearing. It allows us, we have to be able to memorize, we have to be able to express, and we also have to be able to process the information that we're trying to get across to another individual. So there's my little brain guy over there juggling all these different light bulbs all the time, putting all of these pieces together, okay? So why do I spend a few minutes talking about the brain, talking about language? And I, I do this to explain the complexity of what is involved in how we need to process information. And part of that has to do with our hearing. So if we think about the simple game of telephone, and we might have all played the telephone game at one point. Um, I know my kids love the telephone game. Um, at first they were like, what's that mom? And I actually like to show them um, how to play that game because I played that game when I was a kid very often. Um, and so anyway, the, the point of the telephone game is you, it requires you to hear the message correctly. It requires you to understand it, to be able to remember it, and then be able to express it to another person. So imagine if one of these areas fails, right? What happens at the end? The message doesn't come out clear, okay? So if you kind of remember playing that telephone game. So I look at this as I apply this to the auditory system on how a person with hearing loss is actually receiving the message. Okay, so when we think about our brain and when we think about our hearing, we have to understand one of the key most important things of my talk tonight is that we hear with our brain, 
not our ears. Our ears are literally simple funnels that help transmit the sound to the brain. So it's not until the brain are the sounds have any meaning, are they interpret, interpreted, memorized, translated? It doesn't make any sense until that signal comes to the brain stem. So it's processed and it's, it's understood and you can have all these complexities of our language and of all of our senses together, okay? So the brain is the key center point of how we truly hear and understand things around us. So I really, really feel that's very important take home piece from tonight's talk to understand that concept. So when we think about our brain and when we think about us as individuals and just the fact of the natural decline in cognition as we are getting a little older and wiser, um, we believed this statement to be true. And when I first came out of grad school, I recently understood, always felt that the ability to process speech as we got a little bit older slowed down. And it was regardless of hearing loss. It wasn't until 2011, the Gosling and Gang study, that we can first kind of really document that, yes, there actually is true cognitive decline in our ability to make sense of what we hear around us, regardless of hearing loss, just the fact that we are getting a little older and wiser, okay? So terms like auditory therapy and um, pop up through, throughout this concept in that early, um, early stages of 2011. And auditory therapy is still a very prominent type of therapy and cognitive um, therapy and cognition training that we apply today with lots of newer, more um, conceptual research that's going on to address this previously believed statement that's now proven to be true. So we've gone steps further to really look at hearing loss in an older, an adult. So when I first did these talks years ago, my norms were over age 65, was considered an older adult. Well, now our norms are over the age of 75, now even into the 80s, um, where we have hearing loss is, is, is and asking this question, is hearing loss simply important in older adults, older individuals? And we look at this recent statistics, at least two out of every three American over the age now of 75 have some degree of hearing loss. And of that number, only about 15% of the people are doing something about it, okay? So there's 85% of people with hearing loss doing nothing about it, not, a, not acknowledging it, not wearing hearing instruments, not, not addressing the hearing loss that we see present, okay? So of that 15% of people doing something about it, there's maybe about seven, seven and a half percent that might be consistently using something on a regular basis. So we don't have very good statistics, do we, when we look about hearing loss in an older individual, okay? So the reason I bring this up is the next big question is, well, why do we think this is? Why is there maybe some of the 15% of people out there doing something about that. So when I do these in person, usually one of the first things that come up is expense. The hearing aids cost too much. Another a big one is lack of education, lack of knowing where to actually um, go to find an audiologist or to be able to test hearing. Um, where, where do I even go to seek help? with my hearing. Um, I talked to my doctor and, yeah, you know, you're 70 years old now, maybe you should start thinking about it. So out there, realistically, the why has many different reasons behind it. Um, and expense has come up quite significantly with, um, with this talk that I, I do present, okay? So understanding hearing loss being an important factor in an older individual, yes, it's very important, okay? We've got statistics showing there's so many people out there with some degree of hearing loss and doing nothing about it. Um, so this is a very common audiogram. Um, we define this here as being a moderate to severe, what we call this a high frequency hearing loss. So this would be a hearing loss of lack of clarity or not hearing things clear. The old statement, everybody mumbles, 
okay, um, is very common with somebody walking around with an untreated moderate to severe sensory neural type of a hearing loss. So we're gonna assign this hearing loss to our 12-year-old John Smith. He's gonna be a 12-year-old. All his doctors, parents, teachers, therapists, social workers, doctors, grandparents, educators, anybody who encounters this 12-year-old John Smith with this moderate to severe hearing loss agrees hands down, let's fit this child with bilateral, meaning two hearing aids in both ears, red circle represent the right, the blue X's represent the left in this example. So this child can educationally um, be okay in school and get by and, and he's not gonna fall behind educationally and he's not gonna fall behind conversing with his friends and missing out on, on, on environments that he'd like to participate in around him. No questions asked, 12 year old John Smith is fit with bilateral hearing aids immediately. Okay, we're gonna take the same exact audiogram here, that moderate to severe sensory neural hearing loss, and we're gonna assign this to our 82 year old John Smith. And he gets his hearing tested and he goes to his doctor and the doctor says, ah, uh, maybe you should start thinking about getting a hearing aid, okay? Why the difference in the thought process between 12 year old John Smith and 82 year old John Smith? Okay, uh, many, many times I work with individuals, oh, I have, I think I have a hearing loss. I was tested five years ago and, you know, I'm, I'm now 82 years old and uh, maybe just go to his primary doctor. Oh, maybe you should start thinking about getting a hearing aid. Okay, why that difference in the thought process? So I'm here today to kind of show you how this can affect 82 year old John Smith, okay? And he might've had this hearing loss five years, 10 years, 15 years, who knows how many years this hearing loss has been present or it's been declining on a, on a gradual basis, okay? So let's look at some of the consequences of hearing loss. So some of the consequences, here are how we perceive speech with a hearing loss, okay? So the perception of speech, the clarity of speech, understanding and missing out on, on speech here. So I'm gonna advance the slides just a little bit here to kind of show you this same principle with my audiogram plotted on there. So this is that same moderate to severe high frequency sensory neural hearing loss. This little yellow banana here, we call that literally our speech banana, okay? And when we have a hearing loss, this area here is sounds that aren't as clear to an individual walking around with this untreated hearing loss. So sounds like sh, s, k, p, sh, f, sh, t, don't sound as clear to someone walking around with this hearing loss, okay? So the perception of what we're hearing, everybody kind of sounds like they're muffled and they're mumbled, right? But guess what? We've all been wearing these masks, right? And when we put the mask on, we're experiencing a little bit of a mild sensory neural hearing loss, a little bit muffled speech. You can kind of tell the difference just as I'm talking here with you today with this mask on. It muffles the speech a little bit to give us a, an idea of what a mild type of sensory neural hearing loss. So imagine this moderate to severe loss walking around, okay? So our brain is receiving very unclear signals. So it's getting to the brain, but the brain is not making sense of the information. So what does that entail? Well, that entails poor frequency resolution. It gives our brain a lot of stress on having to work. Um, I have the enjoyment of working with um, the older senior population. I'm a dementia certified practitioner. So I do a lot of work with dementia and memory care and trying to utilize and keep the neuroplasticity of the brain functioning as much as we're able to. Um, and so I have this opportunity to really see how much this can be a burden to an individual, okay? I have had clients report to me, man, I can only do one thing a day. I can go to bingo and then I'm done because I have to concentrate so hard on hearing those numbers being called at bingo. 
or, you know, I, tomorrow is my day for the dining room. I can't do anything else but go to the dining room because after the dining room, I am exhausted. The person is mentally drained because they're having to concentrate so hard on having to try to make sense of the environment of the sounds around it. So hearing conversation and quiet and hearing conversation in a dining room setting or a multiple babbler speaker setting, I guess you could say, is much more stressful to an individual, okay? So there are times when older individuals can only do one or two things a day. Part of it is because it's so stressful on the brain. It's so tiring, it's so draining, it's mentally draining all the person's energy to have to concentrate and really have to pay attention in these different environments. And so we're gonna talk about some of the consequences in a few minutes here. Um, but I'd like to use this example, especially since I've been having to do this virtually like this and not in person. Um, I, I like to use this example so you can actually kind of see written out normal, mild, moderate, severe, and then tinnitus, which is ringing and buzzing in the ears. That's a whole nother talk in itself that I'd always be happy to discuss if anyone experiences that. We could talk a little bit about that, um, but I have a whole talk just on tinnitus alone. Um, so with that said, normal hearing, all of a sudden we're, we're conversing. Let's talk about a field of corn, okay? And if we had a mild hearing loss and we were having that same conversation, it would sound like, let talk about a ill of orn. So guess what's missing? The th sh k sounds. Those sounds are not audible to that individual. So if you knew the topic, if you knew the conversation, it was pretty quiet, you might be able to feel the pieces of the puzzle in if you knew what we were talking about, okay? Um, and that's kind of what happens. We look at the hearing system as this auditory puzzle. There's pieces missing and it's hard to really put those pieces together to the brain. So by the time we get down to a moderate hearing loss, we're talking, we're left with like vowel sounds. We're left with let talk about a ill a orn. What? And what do we do naturally? We raise our voice. Let's talk about a field of corn, right? But to that person, it's still sounding like let talk about a ild of orn. And by then you're like, I don't want to talk to that person. They're mean. They're, they're, they're yelling at me. I don't like that. Okay. Because when you have a hearing loss, you can some most times hear volume, but guess what? It becomes more distorted to the brain when you make it louder. Okay. So if we go to a severe hearing loss, by the time we're to the severe loss, we're just left with vowel sounds. So it's like a, a, u, a, i, a, o. You're like, okay, whatever. So if you do the, the nod that you might not know what's going on, right? Do you want to agree to something that you know what you're agreeing to? Okay, so you can kind of get the impact of what can happen when a person really has a hearing loss that's untreated. And let alone being having this hearing loss and being in a conversation when there's multiple people talking at the same time, that's a whole nother complexity in itself that is something that can be addressed, okay? So with technology today, we can test hearing and quiet, which we often go into a sound booth and get tested, but we can also test in the presence of background noise. So someone can actually present with normal hearing sensitivity, so a normal graph, but have a severe or profound loss in a noisy environment. We call that a quicksin type of test, a, a quick test to look at speech in the presence of background noise. So someone could actually be normal hearing sensitivity, but have very difficult time participating in a group setting in a restaurant or in a meeting or in a large social environment, okay? Um, so that's not uncommon. I cannot tell you how many clients that I have seen over the years. Um, one client in particular, I, I still work with him to this day. He's one of my, my very good clients, and my, one of my best referral sources. He's essentially near normal hearing, and he was struggling at work, starting to lose um, positions and work because of his hearing and noise. So he had a severe noise hearing loss. So in the presence of background noise, he struggled, all right? He wears bilateral hearing aids. He's on his second pair. I've known him for 20 years and he is doing fabulous with his hearing aids right now. 
He is one of my best referral sources. He's not the typical candidate you see for hearing aids, but his hearing aids help him hear in the presence of background noise, okay? So there is help out there to really address what we call the clarity of speech. The clarity of speech is something that we can address. We have to learn what makes your individual brain happy. Um, so another example here um, that I can show you, common, do you want to go to the store tomorrow? And the purpose of me showing you this example is because when we make something louder for somebody, it doesn't come through clearer. It comes through actually more distorted. And the reason I bring this up is because you wanna add more meaning to what you're expressing to that person, okay? Um, even sometimes with a severe to profound loss, even with hearing aids, sometimes you have to add more meaning to what you're trying to express to that individual to make that message clearer for them, to be able to give them more information so their brain can process that. So instead of saying it over and louder and louder, you can say, I'm going to the grocery store tomorrow. Do you need any breakfast items or do you need any um, milk? Do you need any eggs? Oh, you're going to the grocery store. Yes, I could use, you know, this, this, and this. So instead of saying it louder and over and repeating it exactly the same, simply rephrase what you're saying to the individual. You never want to raise your voice. You never want to, you know, look mad or scourly when you're rephrasing it or re. re you know, saying it again in a different manner. You wanna talk normally, maintain eye contact, keep normal, you know, normal posture, normal um, posture, and rephrase simply what you're saying. That would be a more positive communication exchange to talk to somebody with hearing loss. And in some severe or profound cases, even with hearing aids on, if you're a new voice to that person, they haven't you know, gotten used to your your signal of your of your voice, you sometimes have to rephrase things. And that's a very, very acceptable communication strategy to reuse. People with hearing loss appreciate you simply adding more meaning to what you're trying to express to them. So that's another big take home piece from today. Okay. Um, so I've recorded this. This is actually my voice, and I'll kind of show you what normal is, and then I'll jump to moderate to severe hearing loss, just so you can kind of get a feel for what does hearing loss like really sound like. I kind of showed you verbatim with my voice and on paper, but I've recorded my own voice. So I am going to say on here, Sally went to the seashore and bought seashells for Susan. So I'm going to show you this example of normal where you're gonna hear my voice by itself, then we're gonna to add two adult voices, then we're gonna add a child's voice in there, then we're gonna have some water running, then we're gonna have the car running, and then we're gonna add a lawnmower and a phone ringing, just to kind of show you even with normal hearing, your brain has to work pretty hard to hear when there's more noise sources coming into the picture. So let me go ahead and share this with you. Sally went to the seashore and bought seashells for Susan. Okay, so that's my voice, and I'm adding two voices. What a People dull say, gray day. what a dull gray when day. Clouds cover the sun. When clouds the cover the sun, the whole world gray. seems dull the and gray. Is gray. The sky Sally is gray. Sally went to the, the seashore and, and bought seashells for Susan. Brown and muddy. The grass is a dark, the grass dull, is dark, dark, dull green. Say what a dull I'm green adding that child's voice, so listen for my voice. As the sun shines more, the colors become brighter. Sally went to the seashore and bought seashells for Susan. Even the flowers are the green factory. All singing colors become brighter. 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 Colors become brighter
So some people with normal hearing can process this with, with some effort, um, but there are some people with normal hearing that by the time they get all this other noise, it's like, oh, get me out of here. I can't take this sound. It's overwhelming to the brain, okay? Um, so I'm gonna go forward here and we're gonna kind of show you, I'm gonna skip a little bit to show you this example, more of our audiogram that I've presented today. Again, notice the speech banana here. And these are the high frequency sounds here. So again, this is an area that's not very audible, but it cannot hear in most cases. Okay, and I'm gonna kind of do a little bit with you're gonna hear me in and out. We won't necessarily run this for the whole time, but I'll give you a little bit of an example to hear what speech sounds like. Um, Cause I get a question to ask like, well, mumbled speech, what does really mumbled speech sound like? Well, now with the masks, people are experiencing a little bit of more mumbled speech, but this is really can, how it can sound whether you have the mask on or not. The mask just happens to make it tenfold. Okay, so let me get this played for you here. There's a little background noise. So you know someone's talking and you really have to concentrate to find where that voice is coming. Just notice how everything just sounds a little bit kind of underwater, a little bit muffled. So I think you kind of get the gist of, of that example there. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. So I do have other recordings of different, by the time we get to the severe, you're pretty much not hearing anything until we get closer to that lawnmower coming on. So a very severe, especially further on the graph to profound, um, it's very detrimental. You're using a lot of visual cues around you. And so sometimes you, you know, especially with an older individual when I'm working with them, uh, oftentimes cognitive decline um, sets in a little higher deterioration rate um, because the fact that their brain isn't being stimulated with any sound going around them. And, you know, you just get a lot of acknowledgement or sometimes you just don't participate in anything or the want to go to different places and to experience different things and do some different activities is not there because it's, a, it's, miserable for someone to be able to process that information, okay? Um, so with that said, understanding hearing loss has actually a medical definition. So this is defined as a medical condition. It has a definition. Loss of hearing is a serious life issue, a medical condition that is associated with physical, emotional, mental, and social well-being, depression, anxiety, emotional instability, phobias, withdrawal, isolation, lessened health status, and lessened self-esteem have all been linked to uncorrected hearing loss. And this definition um, was supplied through the National Council on A Aging and hearing loss, untreated especially hearing loss is highly related to depression, anxiety, and isolation in senior, in the older population. Okay, so I often get times uh, asked, what are some of the symptoms of hearing loss? Well, common symptoms are that when you know, walk into a room and someone's television is like really loud, correct? Or you have difficulty following conversations when you're in a noisy environment um, and you complain all the time that people mumble. Uh, people mum mumble, things like not hearing the doorbell or safety issues in your home, difficult to follow words on a song or when you're listening to music. So an example for somebody to explain what distorted speech sounds like when you talk louder and shout at somebody, it's an example um, that you might be able to relate to is if you know the words of your favorite song on the radio and you 
and you listen to it, you can sing back and forth, you know the words, you can sing it in the shower without the music, but you take that same song and you crank it all the way up and you're like, wow, what? is that it's all muffled and mushed together well that's what happens to the brain when you shout at somebody with a hearing loss it's it's very distracting it's it, it's actually very burdensome on that ear it can it can be so sensitive where it's a startling a startling effect to that person so and oftentimes people frequently ask others to repeat things. So again, remember that replace that word repeat with rephrase, rephrase, okay? I have a whole nother talk that I do. I label it simply tired of saying, huh? Because we talk more about things that can be done to treat actual hearing loss. Um, so that's one of my other popular talks that I love to, to talk about all the time. So it's literally called tired of saying, huh? Uh, so that's a fun one too. So consequences, what are the one of the biggest ones? So I see social isolation as being one of the biggest, um, most common one that I see amongst the older population. And the gerontology literature now leaks loneliness as one of the most important determinants or comorbidities and it, it's exceeding cardiovascular disease and heart attacks even in our older population. And I think part of that is because we're living longer we're seeing increased age, we're seeing increased cognitive decline, and we are seeing as a function of age, increased hearing loss as well in our older population. So it's actually exceeding cardiovascular disease. And another big um, consequence to social isolation is self-esteem, is the want to meet new people or to go to different activities and participate in different things. So a lot of times uh, social isolation really can set in and, and make a big impact on an individual. Um, you know, especially it's, it's really stressful on a senior moving into like a new community for the first time. It's kind of stressful to have to meet new people and remember their names and be able to know who lives where and um, get the times of the activities. And it, it's a burden, especially when you can't hear. And I always put a plug in for visual simulation too. So we think of modifiable senses. Remember we talked about the brain and we talked about our senses. Two of the most modifiable senses that we can control are our vision and our hearing, okay? So always think about what's modifiable when we're looking at an older individual. We can't always slow everything down or we can't always reverse the clock or, or um, turn things around or stop things from happening, but we can look at what we can try to modify to some degree. And our vision, keeping our vision intact and keeping our hearing intact helps the brain keep stimulated, okay? So it's very important to understand those modifiable, um, modifiable sources there. So what are some of the consequences of untreated hearing loss? And when I first started doing these talks, this is not new to new information. Um, we, we knew this back in 1999. So I bring this up. So some of the same findings are found in even newest research going forward. So I've been doing these talks um, since about 1999 and people with untreated hearing loss are most likely to report depression, anxiety, worry, less of social activity, emotional turmoil, insecurity, um, you know, losing their independence is a big one um, with untreated hearing loss. And people who wear hearing aids, who have hearing loss, who do something about it, of that 15%, um, people who are using their hearing aids, and I stress this regularly, report better relationships with their families, better feelings about themselves, improve mental health. We've even seen some um, to kind of um, slow the progression down and some cognitive decline, and we get a greater sense of independence and security, keeping, you know, keeping the keys to their room longer. Or, you know, one of the biggest things that hard for seniors are losing the ability to drive their car, on, uh, you know, losing these independence um, things that these people look forward to, to doing um, is, is significant, and especially with untreated hearing loss. So, Keep in mind that there are consequences when you can't hear and when you can't see. 
okay? Um, so public health problem, and I always bring this up because this is a, a term that's out there as dementia is, is a big term. Um, I offer cognitive screening in my practice and I can do that at any age. I really believe that understanding how our brain truly functions can help us try to engage in better brain health at any age, okay? My daughter, my youngest daughter's 13. I had her um, do cognitive therapy for a while and she's a much better, um, much better production in school now. We learned that she needs to understand things on a what's called a bottom down level um, to order to process information, how her brain has to accept things around her. So it can only make you a better person. And it's information that can be utilized to gain strategies, look at your executive functioning and to look at how the brain can, can do a little bit better in different areas. So that we can always use some improvement, okay? Um, but I bring this up because this is a term that we are gonna most likely hear more and more about, the rate of dementia. And there's over 200 forms of dementia. And they fall under that umbrella of Alzheimer's disease and that umbrella of cognitive decline and dementia. Um, but there's over 200 known forms to date of this. And the rate of some degree and decline of cognitive ability falling into the eventually a category of dementia is estimated to double about every 20 years. So by the year 2050 to date, it's believed that one in 30 Americans will have some form of dementia. Okay. Um, again, there's over 200 known forms right now. There's more research being done to look at cognitive decline um, as we're learning more and more about better brain health going forward. So we have no cure to date um, that can actually prevent this from happening. We can only hope to engage some strategies and to engage looking at modifiable senses to help slow a progression down, okay? So it's kind of really why I want you to really understand the importance and the impact of untreated hearing loss and how this can be kind of a rippling effect for individuals going forward. So memory and hearing loss, um, the diagnoses of, of different forms of cognitive decline are very similar. Symptoms of moderate Alzheimer's disease often um, follow the same kind of consequences we find with untreated hearing loss. So May Memory Clinic at Mayo in Rochester, Minneapolis is one of the um, only places, and there's a getting better, we're getting better in education, that recognizes how important vision and hearing are to the diagnoses of cognitive decline, where they require you to have a full comprehensive audiometric testing done. And if you find hearing loss to treat that hearing loss prior to going through their test battery for cognitive decline. And the same applies for vision, okay? So these are important senses to be sure that they are maintained and that they, um, can help, again, stimulate the brain to supply what we call that neuroplasticity of the brain there. So with that said, kind of looking at similarities of untreated hearing loss on screen to your right there, we see reduced communication ability. We see lessened um, cognitive input, inappropriate psychosocial responses, not knowing how to communicate um, properly or respond properly. Um, we see lessened mental scores. We see a lot of denial, defensiveness, negativity, distrust, paranoia. Um, and oftentimes, you know, paranoia about other people talking about them because they can't intervene. They can't understand what is going on around them very clearly. So there's not a very uncommon. And a lot of these can uh, mimic what we find in um, early onset two of Alzheimer's disease. So lots of similarities between these. And the reason I bring this up is to show you how important we should really consider our hearing mechanism to truly be, okay? Um, other effects are decreased auditory processing abilities in the presence of noise, especially. Um, we want to train ourselves to hear and listen in background noise. So I encourage my older individuals, especially um, where we're at cognitive, cognitive, cognitively, <laughs> where we're at, in stressing them to work hard in the noise, to not just avoid noise, to try to encounter noise and to make them self-process that information. And what they find, it is a little easier. It's not always perfect. 
but it is a little bit easier to make sense of the sounds in the presence of the background noise around them. So oftentimes that loss of independence we talked about, that's a big one. Um, so I asked this question, if you develop hearing loss, will you develop dementia? And the answer is we're all, everybody's at risk. Okay, we are all at risk. Every single person of us are at risk of simply getting older and wiser and having all the other cognitive decline areas kind of go forward. So a colleague of mine, um, Dr. Amy Jackson, and I have made some wellness videos and um, we are trying to put together um, a group of wellness videos to talk about very important factors. We have one for auditory processing now. We have one for um, understanding how hearing loss can affect the workplace. We have one for hearing and dementia. We have one for diabetes and, um, and hearing loss. So we're working on a fifth one um, as we speak. So kind of putting these videos together and I'm gonna share this with you. Um, we have these videos copyrighted and everything. So I'm gonna share these with you. And our goal is to make an educational resource um, website to really kind of engage in how important hearing is to this whole process of, of understanding the consequences that we find on a regular basis. So I'm gonna share this with you. You're not ready yet? I'm ready for what? My appointment isn't until noon. Yeah, but I told you I was gonna pick you up at 10 so we could go shopping before your doctor's appointment. You didn't tell me that. You keep saying you tell me things and you don't. I did tell you. No, you didn't. I would have been ready if you did. Okay, no need to argue. Take your time getting ready. Hey doc, memory's becoming a bit worrisome. She's forgotten a few things over the past few months. I'm a bit concerned it could be dementia. Okay, I certainly understand your concern. However, before we jump the gun, let's rule out a few other conditions that can mimic dementia by causing memory loss, such as depression, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, or maybe even hearing loss. Well, she has diabetes, but that's under control. We just saw the doctor for that. How does hearing loss cause memory problems? In order to remember something, you first have to hear it clearly so it can be stored in short-term memory. If you have hearing loss, you're likely to mishear or not hear what people around you are saying. And then it may seem like you're forgetful, but in reality, you just never really heard it or understood what was being said in the first place. That's very interesting. I know her hearing isn't what it used to be, and I know she's never had it checked. Let's start with a hearing health check, since that will be the easiest. If you're a caregiver and have concerns about the memory loss of your family member or a patient, think hearing and get a hearing health check today. So that is uh, the website we are starting to kind of put together. It is a work in progress still to this date, um, but thinkhearing.org. Um, is that wellness resource center we are trying to put together to educate um, individuals on the importance of hearing loss and recognizing that. So um, I wanted to share that with you. And um, what can we do about it? So a kind of, you know, things that we can do if we do find hearing loss is do something about it. And hearing aids by themselves don't kind of help all by themselves. You need to train the brain to use them properly, to hear the sounds around you properly, okay? Oftentimes, and maybe you guys know somebody in the audience that, oh, he has hearing aids, but guess what? They're in the drawer. He doesn't wear them, right? Well, guess what? They're not doing the drawer any good. You need to figure out what's going to make your brain happy. How are we going to put these in the funnels here to get the sound to the brain? Okay. So there is a lot of steps to engaging in proper use of hearing aids. Consistently use of them, consistent use of them is very important. Um, but, you know, I can tell you how many people might have hearing aids or pairs of hearing aids. I can sometimes work with these seniors and they say, yeah, I've got five pairs in the drawer there. I'm like, five pairs? Okay, let's pull that drawer out. Let's test your hearing. Let's see what's going on cognitively. Let's see how you do a noise. And let's see if we can work with any of those five pairs in the drawer there. Because that's a lot of money that they invested in the drawer. Okay, it's not helping the drawer. So very important to understand that it's simply just the first step. Um, lots of 
training, lots of um, consistency on your part to wear them, get your brain used to hearing these sounds more regularly. So when you've had hearing loss for longer periods of time, it's harder for the brain to just simply adapt and adjust, okay? It, it can be done, but it's going to take some some doing. It might take some hand-holding, and that's where audiologists come into play and uh, are working with individuals to rehabilitate the hearing so they feel more confident going into the listening environments, okay? Um, so cognition, hearing, and memory are all related. A lot of the times improved cognition keeps our brains healthier and sharper. It's easier for, to follow conversations. We can organize our thoughts more clearly. We can learn new terms and concepts and it's easier for us to follow a conversation. So oftentimes if I get a phone call from an individual and we schedule an appointment and I get several phone calls prior to the appointment, like what time was that appointment? Was it one o'clock or four o'clock? I, I couldn't remember the time or the date or the telephone number. Oftentimes the misinterpretation of that information um, after multiple phone calls, I already know that there's some level of cognitive decline occurring um, prior to even seeing that individual. Okay, so important to kind of really understand that these are all really tied together. Okay, um, this is my favorite gentleman from Up, you know, Say What? I love him in the movie, always adjusting his hearing aid. It's, it's one of my favorite parts of that movie. Um, so simply get your hearing checked. Is, is a take home piece from today. And this is my social distancing picture that I found. I think you need a hearing test. Why the heck do I need a hairy chest, right? They're, they're six feet apart of the couch talking and oftentimes misunderstanding what's being said is not uncommon. Um, so, you know, I do wanna get a new shirt. It's gonna say audiologist, you know, I save marriages because misunderstanding a lot of what's being said or what's understood or I know how speech is coming across. Um, very, very important to, to know that these things happen on a regular basis. So it's kind of fun being an audiologist because you can make a big difference in a family's life, not just an individual life, but in a family's life in many ways, improving a communication exchange. So um, with that said, I do have a couple other videos. I know we've got a few minutes here. Um, I can, if you're interested, I can play one more video. This one is the one in the workforce um, and we can play that. It's just, it's just two minutes long. Let's play that one for you. This is our newest one too. For eight years, I've been the go-to person at work. I've received every honor and won every award available. So no one was surprised when I announced I had just broken the one day sales record with an order of 40 units. But before a single drop of champagne was sipped, my boss walked in and burst my bubble. It turns out the client wanted to order 14 units, not 40. Huh? When I told my wife the story, she said, uh, well, I have noticed your listening skills aren't what they used to be. She reminded me that just last week I spent a lunch meeting describing our anniversary dinner to some colleagues of mine, only to hear, uh, that's great, but we asked how was your data last month, not how was your date. My mother-in-law chimed in and offered to lend me her hearing aids. The evidence had me worried, so I decided to have my hearing checked. Needless to say, am I glad I did. Turns out I had some hearing loss that was causing me and a lot of people around me to have a, a lot of unneeded frustration. Just knowing I had an issue forced me to double check what I heard, which helped me avoid mistakes. And the hearing care professional was able to provide a solution that helped me hear pretty well again. Turns out hearing loss was my biggest problem. And that's what was causing my listening problems. But once I got my hearing loss addressed, I was back on top in no time. If you or someone you know tends to mix things up from time to time, don't think they're ignoring me, rude, incompetent. Instead, think hearing and get a hearing health check today. Good, so I'm glad I had two of these today. Um, so processing and noise, there's some different studies here, some research studies that are showing you that um, you know people with cognitive decline and and people even um, 
with studies done over a longitudinal period of time, we have now been able to find that cognitive test results compared with age and hearing loss for about every 25 dB of hearing loss equals about seven years of aging. Um, so given the fact that 25 decibels is only what we call a moderate, mild loss, not even a moderate to severe, like the example I was giving you throughout this presentation, that's pretty significant. So um, there's a lot of good research out there. So some take home things is simply, you know, do something about it, have your hearing checked. If you have hearing loss, pursue hearing aids and simply consistently use them. It'll make a big impact in your life on a regular basis. Um, different styles of hearing aids here you might see. And, you know, simply keep your ears healthy to hear properly, you want to stimulate sound. Um, you know, encourage you to listen to books on tape, radio, keep yourself actively listening in noise regularly. Um, use some listening game and apps that are out there. There's a lot of cognitive brain health apps out there that are actually very good that are useful for you. Listen to music and enjoy music. I use a lot of music in my dementia work because music opens up more neuroplasticity of the brain, really makes the brain fire. So um, I use music regularly. I am a saxophonist and I play pretty consistently. I have a rock band. I have a big band that I sub in in and um, I play a lot with my family all my my kids and family play music so music's a big part of my life and a big part of my work especially with my dementia patients so keep yourself active keep up with current events reading exercising your brain um, there are devices for the TV there's pocket talkers there's alarm clocks there's a lot of assistive devices out there um, that are available to assist as well um, with maybe specific concerns you have in a specific area, okay? Um, so um, there's CapTel phones, there's caption phones that can utilize technology to help a person not only to hear the sound auditorily better, but to visually see the information as well. Um, so there's a CapTel program, um, a caption call program, and a um, ITAC program in the state of Illinois. We have three amplified phone programs available to anyone with hearing loss in, um, in Illinois that it's a free service to them once they're certified to have hearing loss. We can obtain one of these listening devices, um, three different types of phone and assistive devices for the phone that are out there. Okay, um, so communication tips, we did talk about those, um, you know, don't cover your mouth with the masks. A good solution for that is to wear a mask that's clear if you're able to. These are FDA approved masks. Um, it allows a little bit more visual cues, but it still does muffle speech, but it is a better sometimes needed result than just these masks that make us all muffled and you lose all the visual information of what's going on. So anyway, um, and the biggest one is rephrase instead of shouting and repeating and be patient with someone who has a hearing loss. They want to have a communication exchange with you. So don't get frustrated with them. Figure out a way to make that a happier experience for both parties. And um, people in themselves appreciate that, taking the time to understand that. Okay, um, overall message, keep your brains healthy, stay young, your ears play a big part, and uh, you should at least have your hearing tested every two years. Um, it's more often every year to 18 months if you have a you know, significant hearing loss, if you have diabetes, 18 months is the protocol. So different um, things, but at least every two years have your hearing checked and you can start at any age. There's no too young of an age to start having your hearing checked, okay? Um, regularly clean your hearing aids. You know, hearing aids are good and they're terrific and they can be wonderful and great, but they need routine maintenance. About every six months on hearing aids need to be clean, checked, tuned to keep them optimal. So keep your brain health happy keep your brain working, keep yourself happy there. So just like the soccer players on my lower screen there working their muscles, we need to work on our brain health, okay? Um, so with that said, I have, um, I can take questions at any point and I haven't been as good looking at the chat box, but I don't think I see any in there. Um, but there's my information for you. Um, I, good contact is email, my website, 
finerhearing.com. You can contact me through as well, or my phone number is listed there. If you have any specific questions um, from today's presentation or anything that can, I can address, I'd be happy to do that for you. Okay. And Colin will have my information as well. Um, if you're ever interested in um, speaking with me directly, I'd be happy to reach out to anyone on this talk or maybe someone who might not have been able to join us this evening.